for a treat. Phil Snyder has 17 years experience working in the government black projects. He carried a level three security clearance. He's a former government geologist and engineer in the black projects, underground bases at areas 51, S4, and Los Alamos. He's going to expand your mind here this morning. Please welcome Mr. Phil Schneider. I'm Phil Schneider. Uh, I spent 17 years in black budget programs, um, government geologist as engineer, structural engineer with aerospace applications. Uh, Self-taught metallurgist became uh, uh, kind of famous in my own right. Um, I basically uh, would have a set of notes here, but they're unavailable <laughs> in all this melee. Up here I have different artifacts uh, explaining uh, some of them are alien metals that have been produced both on this planet and the confines of outer space that are now used in all stealth aircraft. So all stealth aircraft, for instance, all black jets, uh, what you're seeing of, of black helicopters and the like, uh, the skins and the coatings and the residues that are used predominantly in the in the aircraft themselves, in the airframes and the in the rotor blades and the fans and in some cases in submarines, uh, special titanium hulls, in the Phoenix class submarines now. Uh, all these come from. All this has come from alien technology. 1947 is what the public has been told. Uh, something crashed in the backyard in New Mexico, a place called Roswell, New Mexico. Unfortunately, that's what the public's been told. The military's known about the alien question for the better part of 70 years, and they first saw their glimpse of what was going on as early as 1909 in the American Southwest. Now, Army cavalry evidently were chasing some bandits, and they entered this cave. They were holed up in a cave, and what they found in there was flying disks and and little gray guys and all kinds of weird things, and they didn't know how to explain that, and they wrote them down as best they could, and it's been in secret archives ever since. That's up in the, this in the, down by the Truth or Consequences uh, area of New Mexico. Well, the alien thing is more than just a what I'd call a non-visible threat. We on the surface, first of all, all information dealing with alien or alien reproduced technology or alien reproduced vehicles or any other kinds of things well hidden from the American public. Our black budget, for instance, garners $1.023 trillion every two years. It's over $500 billion a year. Right now, there are 131 active deep underground military bases in the United States. There's 1,477 of them worldwide. Each one has an average cost of 17 to 19 billion dollars. Each one is uh, built in the site. Uh, oh, it used to be it'd take a year to two years to build each one. And now they're capable of building a couple of them a year uh, with sophisticated methods. Uh, uh, my colleague uh, Al Bielik has actually been on some of the high-speed railways, uh, the Magneto-Leviton trains that connect all the deep underground military bases within the United States. He's been on a Mach 2 train and floats off of, floats off of a single rail at a, a three-quarters of an inch off the rail and is uh, what you'd call high-tech. We have nothing like this on the surface. Uh, the public basically has been totally lied to. We're considered stupid or even moronic in some cases. Uh, it's got to stop. If, if we're going to gain our country back, we must, and I repeat, must, regain, we must instill in our public officials Anybody that goes and does public service, they must tell us the truth. If they cannot do this, then, then they must be impeached or they must, must be removed from office. If this cannot occur, if, if the truth cannot totally come out, the, the, I, there are reasons for secrecy, for instance, but if the truth cannot totally come out, uh, 
But what's the use in us having anything called freedom? Okay, now I have pictures here that I'm going to show you during the break in artifacts. And I ask you to kind of look at them but not handle them. I have actual crashed retriever metal from Roswell, New Mexico. It's given to me when I was 14 years old. For instance, I've got other things. I've got pieces, pieces of titanium, this piece of titanium, a special titanium alloy made for everything from the original SR-71 Blackberry, that's old hat now. Uh, F-117A is their old hat now. Uh, they're making a whole new class of hypersonic above Mach 5 aircraft that employ they employ extremely modern charged particle beam weapons. They don't even use lasers anymore. Uh, computer enhanced imaging radar. Although it's used in helicopters for public surveillance, computer enhanced imaging radar, and in satellite technology, uh, the brand new kit on the block is a, is a kind of infrared technology uh, where a, a satellite uh, 150,000 miles out in a geosynchronous orbit, or not quite geosynchronous orbit, but but these spy satellites can literally look in and see a dime on the floor, you say on your kitchen floor. They have a resolution factor of 99.999961. Uh, this particular piece of metal, I'm going to drop it on the floor here, it'll kind of ring like a bell. You can't break it. Withstand temperatures in excess of 7,500 degrees Fahrenheit. It has niobium in it. It also has miranite in it, element 123. Yeah, please do. Uh, it's in a it's in a non-crystalline form. This is just kind of a dripping off of the out of the main crucible. Here's a crystalline example. It's in the scalenohedral crystalline form. We got this from the large grays. Uh, technology. Uh, this is grown in the confines of, of outer space, which has not quite a super vacuum, but uh, by the way, this is capable of withstanding temperatures in except 10,000 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, it's great for uh, certain parts of aircraft. Uh, this kind of material I work with on a daily basis. Up here we have a transparency of Groom Lake. Lake is where the infamous Area 51, S4, S2, a CIA base, uh, uh, it was originally a bombing range, a nuclear test site. Uh, it was later become the most secret base in the United States. Um, it employs over 18,000 workers who work in sh shifts of 12 hours a, at a whack. Most of them work in the cover of darkness, like us. We built out nine underground military bases there, each with an average uh, uh, capacity, capable of basically a city underground, roughly four and a quarter cubic miles hollowed out underground. They have boring machines, for instance. They have boring machines, for instance. They don't bore. They literally vitrify and melt the rock, deflagrate the rock. It's a very sophisticated laser. Uh, uh, melting and deflagrating system. It reduces the rock to a powder and then melts the, the remaining rock as a coating on the inside of the base so you don't have to use gunite cements and other kinds of things like that. That's all, the, all old hat now. Uh, technology is so just basically the new technology we get is the old hat of the military. I'm going to be real brief about it. I carried a level one security clearance, the Riley 38 factor. There are very few of us there's nobody except myself, to my knowledge, talking like this. <clears throat> nobody. I'm breaking the law. I'm breaking world as well as federal law. I'm coming out and even talking about this to a group of people. I love my country more than I love my life. Two weeks ago, I was shot in the shoulder. I don't want to gore you women out, but I was shot in the shoulder up here. I recently have become friends of a of a uh, retired FBI agent who took me under the wing. He says, I've never seen a person braver than you. And I said, well, there's more coming. 
Our patriot movement in these United States is going to pick up the ball, and we are going to kick the parasites out. First of all, George Washington and Thomas Jefferson, a few other founding fathers, Patrick Henry to mention a few, all had visions that these United States was going to live 700 years from where they were standing, and that was uh, somewhere around the, uh, the late 1700s, early 1800s. So you can count this country, this country isn't going to go to a new world order. I believe firmly in constitutional law. I'm not very well skilled in it, and that's my embarrassment. But I'm going to be real blunt about it. The government that is now instilled in ruling over us are ruling as we're serfs and they're the kings and queens. Now, that's a feudal system. That isn't even a democracy. We are now being ruled by an autocracy and a technocracy. In other words, technical knowledge is rules as king with a feudal type system. Feudal systems haven't been used in the last 350 years and they're coming back like gangbusters. If we are complacent, if we do not speak out in droves, and I'm not just talking about me, I'm talking about a bunch of us getting together and getting on the stump and loving our country more than we love our lives, getting on, some of us are going to get killed. I almost got killed a couple of weeks ago. It hadn't been for a uh, hadn't been for an FBI, a retired FBI man, who risked his life, his career, everything, put it all on the line, and he didn't know me from Adam. A week prior to that, uh, he he re he listened to one of my tapes I gave up in Post Falls, Idaho, and I'm gonna be very blunt about. He mentioned he said that we need a lot more of you, but unfortunately we're not getting anybody. Well, I'm trying to, I'm not the best speaker in the world, but I'm trying to relay to you that we need to get out and seriously get the message out. These shows are great. This, this hall should be absolutely packed, standing room only, and we should be getting the message out to as many people as we can with as many shows as there are, is it possibly to reach. There are many is the public. We ought to get on talk shows, we've got to get on we've got to get on news shows and T V shows and we have to really get the message out. And I think we're doing it, but it's it's a little bit slow in the in the first part. That's that's just that part of the what I want to say. In working with the black projects, I was very loyal. I was picked because I was very strong mentally. There's a bunch of us that were picked because we don't crack under pressure. We don't freak under pressure, so to speak. Everyday events don't bother us. Now, I was involved in something very controversial, almost totally unbelievable to most of you. Some of you are religious people. I think all religions, all religions, have a time and a place, and they definitely have a place in America. Now, another thing I want to reach to you is that during the unbelievable part, I was involved in building another base onto in inside of Dulce, New Mexico, which is Los Alamos Laboratory. It's a biological laboratory on the southwest part of the Archuleta Mesa. Uh, we built an underground facility, a better part of three cubic miles hollowed out underground. Then to the southwest of that, we built, we were, we were in the process of the early stages of building, we drilled four large uh, tunnel-like holes. Some of them ran two and a half miles under the surface. A uh, number of the early, at that time, number of the original uh, uh, wells or dr uh, drilling uh, machines that were used were were um, uh, at the rate of a, 
two miles a day, it was fairly rapid. The equipment kept coming up broken. So we wanted to go down, we wanted to send somebody down there, a human observer, or human observers in this case, to find out what was going on. Well, to our total surprise, first of all, the government knew all about it. They didn't tell anybody. Uh, when I saw Green Beret and Black Beret people in camp, inside of our geologist camp, I knew something was up, the gig was up. First of all, I knew all about the alien agenda. I'll explain that in a few minutes. The large alien greys had been encamped there for as best as believed possible about four or five hundred years. It had been one of their internal bases. And we'd, we'd drilled holes right on top of it. All the stinking air, all the black sooty air came right out as soon as one of the first hole was sunk and all this soot came up and, well, that's when it all, all the hell broke loose, really, all it started. Anyway, after we drilled all four holes, it took about a, two days to drill all four of them. And when you build an underground base, you drill four basic holes, and then you build you know, called stopes or cross member holes across, and then you bla use blasting equipment, you know, special blasting equipment by the analyzation of the rock formation, and you literally blast out or tunnel out or, or deflagrate or melt rock out to build the large rooms that are required for this underground base. Well, in this process, I was lowered down the basket of one of these holes, and about from me to this elderly woman here in the front was sitting a seven-foot-tall alien gray. The stench was worse than the worst garbage can you can imagine. Uh, the person was at, or the entity was absolutely horrible. I didn't waste any time to reach for my pistol. At that time, as an engineer, I didn't have time to carry all the fold or all of one of these big submachine guns at all the sea spray and the yellow fruit and the, all the uh, outer perimeter and inner perimeter security people carried. I carried a little Walter PPK pistol with a nine shot clip. <clears throat> this was in late August of 1979. Now, you got a regular suit of clothes, you got a regular clothes on, plus you're in a almost like a spacesuit environment and you're reaching for a gun, it's it's not the easiest thing to do and then to pop a clip in it and start shooting. And I killed two of them. Yes, they're mortal and they do die. However, in the process, uh, one of them did this. I all I remember is that he just kind of waved his hand in front of his chest and the next thing I know, this blue beam hit me and just literally opened me up like a fish. And every, uh, burnt, burnt my fingers right off of me. And it was some form of electrical force because the kind of like hit, being hit by a lightning bolt burned all my toenails off of me. Uh, completely crispy crittered my left foot. Burnt the shoe right off of me. Um, all I remember is the smoking remains, and I'm laying almost, I'm still conscious, but in and out of, I didn't remember much. And there was a, a Green Beret that was right behind me that risked his life. In fact, he died. But he risked his life. He shoved me back in the basket and hit the button and took me up. And I wouldn't be alive talking to you today if it wasn't for him. I'm forever indebted. He lost his life. 66 Secret Service agents. Green Berets, Black Berets, crack troops lost their lives because the government, our United States government, lied, did not tell us anything about the alien threat. There's a war underneath there, and I'm talking dead serious. It's been going on since that time. Since late August of 1979, our military, the Russian military, basically the militaries of the world have been in constant conflict with the outer space alien. The, the small gray, the large gray, the reptilians, the whole thing. There are, 11, there are 11 distinct races of aliens. Two are benevolent. One had to leave here in a hurry because their world is under attack, both on the surface as well as underground there, the Pleiadesians. They're familiar, maybe some of you are familiar with that, uh, would some of you raise your hands who've heard of Billy Meyer and uh, some of the, uh, oh, very good, about half the group. Well, 
Billy Meyer is one of these lucky people that they figured, well, he's kind of a simple type. We'll show him everything. Well, these are the benevolent aliens, and they've been here helping us. In fact, I have a picture. I have a picture. Let me reach for it here. I have a picture of one of the aliens been working for the United States Pentagon for the last 58 years. His name is Val, Val Valiant Thor. He's right here. There's my father in the background. This old place, the ready room of the USS Eldridge, Al Bielica has probably explained or maybe even shown you this picture. There's a list of the some of the notable people in it. They're all the atomic bomb scientists of the day, all the uh, time variant uh, experimentalists of the day, all the top physicists. Of, of that particular day. This was, in, this was in August of 1943. Now this guy has not changed one iota in 58 years. Started work, he came here, crashed here or whatever, whether he's under duress or not, he started work for our U.S. Navy and military operations in 1937, uh, either 37 or 38 is what I've been told. So it's for 58 years, this man's been employed probably under duress. If you don't do as we say, we're just going to use you for alien bait or something. I don't know. But anyway, he basically hasn't changed. He lives for 490 years, what he says his lifespan is. Now, he's supposedly a semi-benevolent, he's a human-looking type person. He has six fingers and six toes, and he's got one oversized heart, one lung, giant lung, uh, his blood vessels are bigger. He's got copper oxide for blood similar to an octopus. Uh, his brain capacity 300 centimeters greater than ours. He has a thinking capacity. Uh, IQ, if, it, if you were to measure it, would be totally off the scale. It'd be about a 1200 IQ. Um, he speaks 100 languages fluently, alien as well as others. Um, he's a remarkable person. I had a chance to meet him one time. Now. Um, by the way, he doesn't shake hands. He was kind of in a spacesuit because all aliens, regardless of benevolent or otherwise, they're carrying germs and diseases and bacterium in and on them that are deadly to us. If, if I were making policy, I, I'd quarantine them all because, because how do we not know that some of our diseases like AIDS, Ebola, uh, hantavirus and a few of these other weird designer diseases, as I call them, are not made from the cadavers of some of these aliens as a biological weapon to use against the people of the United States. Well, I'm tired. I'm a tired American speaking out. telling you is kind of a, almost like a brain overload here. Back in 1946, we set off a, a number, actually four atomic bomb tests at Bikini Atoll. It's a group of islands in the South Pacific. I have an original photograph here with the original language on the photograph that shows there is a large alien spaceship off a wingtip of the United States aircraft. It was a drone aircraft right at the point where the bomb was beginning to show a neutron flash cloud. Here's the bomb going off. Here's the airplane tip here, and here is the alien spacecraft. Now, in 1947, excuse me, 1947, questions later, please. In 1947, after Roswell debacle, our military got before the U.S. Senate. They were hauled before the U.S. Senate and says, what's going on here? Well, we didn't know anything about disks until this happened. It flopped in our backyard. Total lie. They lied to the U.S. Senate. They should have been prosecuted as traitors. Anybody lying to a United States Senator or House of Representative, any Senator or House of Representative person, President of the United States, Vice President, any, any Cabinet member lying to the American public is a traitor and should be dealt with in an appropriate fashion.
This is actual proof, positive, that this occurred in 1946. Now, the U.S. military knew all about flying disks, and flying disk technology is early, thoroughly early, is 1933. Of course, we remember the Germans did too, the Nazi Germans, Hitler and all, all their bent, bunch of people. Now, it gets to the big question, if, if all this has been hidden from us, you know, everybody says, well, where's the proof? I've got some of the proof laying on the table. But a lot of you probably are totally skeptical. They say, well, I could be anything. In my hand here, I have a piece of what's called corbamite. It's the heaviest element in the world. Element 140. This piece of material weighs 15 ounces. It's three and a half times the weight of uranium. It cannot be made to emit gamma rays. It cannot be isotoped. It is totally stable. It is used in all stealth aircraft and all Phoenix class submarines. When combined with other alien elements, it is impregnable. It cannot be melted with charged particle beam weapon. When properly combined in secretive compounds, it can withstand temperatures in excess of 10 million degrees Fahrenheit. It is grown by aliens who have given a good... The other side of the alien question is, some of these aliens have broken off from their mainstream and said, we're not getting a fair shake, and so this is what happens. And I'm talking about the alien graves. Some of them broken away. They're talk about not being popular. But this particular piece of metal is an amazing piece of technology. It's capable of being grown in 15 different crystal systems. Now, I'm a geologist, and I, prior to 15 or 20 years ago, knew of only six crystal systems. There's actually 15, if you count all the alien metals. Now, this is only element 140. If you look at the local periodic table in your local library, it says 104. Somewhere down the line, we've been lied to, we've been cheated. What we have to do is we have to literally ask for the truth. If we cannot ask for the truth, we must demand the truth. We must take it before courts of law and common law systems, and we must demand it. If we cannot do this, our founding fathers told us the only thing left is to overthrow to get the parasites out. I don't advocate overthrow, but it does look like this may be the only alternative. Now, I'm going to casually mention to you something that's very scary indeed and tell you what the alien agenda is. And it's going to sound very familiar. The alien agenda is the complete takeover of this planet, the killing off of five, six, to seven eighths of the world's population by the year 2029. U.S. military has known about this for 45 years. They've told no one. As far as I know, I'm the only person standing before a crowd talking about the alien agenda secretively. Okay. They, Back in 1954, I'll give you a quick overview. There was the created 1954 treaty where Eisenhower signed a pact with the known alien species of the time. There were three at the time. And he said that we're going to deal in high technology, but you can take a few head of cattle and a few human beings and you can experiment on them. It's unthinkable. It's stuff straight out of the Nazi death camps. And I'm kidding you not, it's plain BS, and it's got to stop. Now, 
the great in 1954 treaty would have been violated. After, after the great firefight, the alien-human war, I am the only living survivor talking about it worldwide at all. The only one. The other two are in nursing homes in Canada, and the Canadian government refuses to allow any U.S. people, including myself, to talk to them because they are afraid of kidnap. Probably the reason I got shot to pieces and 11 attempts on my life is I am a direct threat to the entire system. The New World Order, the alien agenda is one in the same. It's world takeover and the decimation of the population of this planet. Now I'm going to tell you something a little bit different about the alien species. The bad news ones there are nine races of alien populations. To look at a human being is a bag of food. They're not cannibals. They don't eat the flesh and the bones and all that kind of stuff. They use the glandular secretions of animals and human beings as a mixture of the vitamins for their food. They get high off of our adrenal gland substances called adrenal comb. It's, a, it's something like uh, cocaine to them. Now, what can we do about it? We do, right now, if we do nothing, we can do nothing about it, and it will continue to go on. Basically, we'll be led in the dark, and you'll keep seeing more and more people disappear. Right now, there's 100,000 children totally unaccountable through FBI archives, cannot be traced anywhere. They haven't been murdered. Nobody's ever seen them. I think they're hauled underneath in some of these bases and they are summarily done away with and they are literally eaten. Now, that is a scary thing indeed. Some, and I'm not asking you to believe me in total. I am asking you to seriously do enough homework that you can go out in through the public record, through the congressional records, find out who's voting for what, and go from there. Do your own program. Do your own agenda and do your own speaking out. And if enough of us do this, there is some saving grace. However, we don't have a whole heap of time left. Technological governments on this planet are raping the planet. We're, we're going to run out of everything that we need. I'm going to pollute everything in sight in the better part of 20 years. Now I know you've heard some poppycock stories. Oh, we're going to run out of coal. We're going to run out of gasoline. We're going to run out of this, that, and the other. And 25 and 30 year, years ago, you heard all this hogwash. Well, don't believe it. Basically, anything you read in a paper, you should take with a grain of salt. Start reading and what is missing out of the article. Ask yourself, what's missing in this article that I should know? Maybe that's the truth. Fill in the blank spots, so to speak. White copy is only one leg of the triangle. There are two other legs, two other pieces of the puzzle. What we have to do as a group of people, concerned people at that, and this group seems to be the, no, quite that, is we have to assert ourselves in a way that we've never thought possible. Now, I'm not asking you to do what I'm doing. But I'm telling you, what I'm doing is very important. Every one of you is equally important. You wouldn't be in this room otherwise. You know, all these other people out here that didn't come to the lecture, they really don't want to hear it. I, uh, yesterday I heard a fellow who says, I'm sorry to say I, I belong to uh, this military organization, that military, militant organization. I, I don't believe in the alien question. I, 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 there's no proof of it. And so I show him an artifact and he says, well that's nice. And, so that could be lead. Well, I happen to know this isn't lead. It scratches diamond and it's harder than that. Here's a sapphire that I found. When we blew a mountain apart, all these sapphires fell out. And sapphire has a hardness of nine right next to the hardness of a diamond. This thing scratches the heck out of it. Let's tear it apart. I'll tell you something. This technology is fine and dandy. At the risk of the human race, at the risk of one human life, it is totally worthless. We have to 
the one beautiful thing about the United States of America is we value a human person's life. The minute we lose it, we are dead meat. It is, it is tantamount that we get back to constitutional law and it, for our officials not to believe in it or obey it. First of all, for a politician to say, well, I believe in the U.S. Constitution, but I believe in gun control. It can't be, you can't be a master of two houses. It don't work. What you must do is tell that politician you are disobeying the Constitution of the United States that you're sworn to uphold and you are in treason territory. Think about what you have said. You have 30 days to make that apology. If you do not make that apology, you are a treasonous individual and should be prosecuted. There's a few other things I want to run by you, and they're kind of in rapid-fire order. Area 51 is only one base, one of the 131 bases. Of these 131 bases, I call Area 51 a mega base. It's got more than one base in it. It's Tonopah Test Range, Area 51, S2, S4, Groom Lake, and a host of others. Now, these mega bases are gobbling up our gross national product. Right now, we're spending 28% of the gross national product on building underground bases solely. That doesn't count for the defense budget. That doesn't count for the spare parts budget. It doesn't count for any of that at all. And the black budget is dead, dead wrong. It sidesteps the United States Congress and its constitution of its people and says you're a bunch of morons you don't need to know. Well a need to know basis is an executive order written during the Eisenhower era right after the created 1954 treaty and is treasonous and illegal in this country and should be overturned and abolished. I believe in military preparedness. I believe in military secrecy to some extent. Because there's always going to be spies out there, and there are always going to be people that want want your hunk of territory, your house, or your ground, maybe even a country like that. Yeah. Most of us remember what this crazy person in Russia, Jernovsky, had to say, we want Alaska back. Well, baby, you're not going to get Alaska back without a horrendous fight. Alaska is my land. I was born here in these United States. I have risked my life and limb for these United States, and I love my United States more than my life. And I will defend these United States against all foreign powers foreign and domestic. Now, every one of you in this room are prob have probably, to some extent, minor or major, done just that. And that is what this country needs. Patriots you are, patriots you are becoming, patriots and constitution builders you must continue to be. Now, all this alien thing is fine, except for one thing. Alien takeover is a serious threat. Kept totally out of the public view, off the surface, I'm sure the underground bases, without question, are being used as form a place to house alien takeover. Alien takeover means the implementation of a one world government. Direct opposite of constitutional law. Direct opposite of freedom of choice. Freedom of religion. Other freedoms that go with it. 
right to bear arms. We are the militia of the United States. Every single person who believes in the Constitution of these United States and its Bill of Rights is a militia member. Are we going to tolerate what we've heard from Ruby Ridge? Are we going to tolerate what we've heard from Waco? Are we going to tolerate uh, that a uh, fertilizer bomb blew six sub-basement floors? And I'm telling you something about sub-basement floors of a, a World Trade Center. They're 29 feet thick each with seven kinds of rebar reinforcement. The only weapon capable of doing such destruction and melting the concrete and extruding the rebar and the I-beam steel up to six feet in length longer than it originally was and melting the ends of it is a nuclear weapon. Now, the people they have in custody as fall guys may have been able to produce weapons and bombs and kill rabbis in New York, but I hate to tell you this, they did not have anything to do whatsoever with the World Trade Center bombing. The only thing used was a construction nuclear weapon. It was housed at Mather Air Force Base, the only place such things are kept. Incidentally, about Mather Air Force Base in Oklahoma City, Mather Air Force Base trucks were seen two weeks before the Alpha P. Murrah building got blown to pieces. Strange. I don't believe in coincidences. They're non sequitur. They cannot be proven mathematically, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So they don't exist. However, Oklahoma City bombing a fertilizer and a and a uh, fuel oil bomb. Give me a break, folks. You can blow that one by my ears, but I'm not a dummy, and neither are you. Neither is anybody in this room. We've been lied to, and the lies have got to stop, and they must stop immediately. If our public officials cannot tell us the truth, then they cease to be public officials, and they are automatically guilty of treasonous acts and should be dry, tried and convicted, and if necessary, in jail, whether it be house arrest or otherwise, before they can do any more damage. Those that murder children, those that abuse children, those that sexually abuse children should not suffer to live. The CS gas that was poured in onto the Waco complex of Mr. Koresh, CS, by the way, stands for cesium. Cesium is an atomic element. It's an isotope. It's a radioactive compound. It is deadly to people under the age of 10. Take one breath and their lungs are singed and they die in 72 hours or less. They poured that gas continuously for 48 hours on that compound. Now, I don't believe in a lot of things. I don't believe anybody is that wicked that you have to kill them a hundredfold over after they're dead. But this is the mentality of the people now ruling as kings and queens over us, and it must stop. If we allow another election to go by with the same ilk in the White House, we have only ourselves to blame. Now, this room isn't going to change the outcome of an election. I personally believe, I don't believe there's going to be another election. I believe martial law is going to hit this country before that happens. The right things are going. Because we refuse to stand up. We refuse to literally get out and risk our lives in talking. Now, some of us got jobs and families and great responsibilities greater than I have. And I agree, that's tough. It's very hard. I cannot sympathize with you because I don't I'm not in your situation. But I have a young family. I have an ex wife and child. Defense Intelligence Agency goons tried to kidnap my daughter not too long ago. My ex wife being a, working in the state government services in Oregon. 
picked up her 22 handgun, shoved it in the in the back of the neck of this one person. He said, Give me my daughter back. If I don't, I pull the trigger. Gave the daughter back. Good choice. Now, the remark that my ex-wife had to say to this individual was, "If you ever, if I ever see you again in any way, shape, or form, I will kill you on sight." You're an abuser of children, therefore I, su you, I suffer to you that you do not, sh you should not live. By the way, she threatened a federal agent. She should be in jail, blah, blah, blah. Nothing like that's happened. These people don't want publicity. I shot a federal agent 16 days ago. Shot him dead when I was bleeding to death with a shoulder wound that he'd shot me. He had shot at a retired FBI agent who theoretically is, carries the same same coverance as, uh, covering as a Secret Service agent. Got protection forever. He's a cop forever, federal cop forever. Now, <clears throat> that doesn't mean a whole lot. I made a report and went to the FBI. Do you realize, that, oh, you know what they said? They said, things like this happen, Mr. Schneider. We don't either believe you, I'm using that as my own italics or we don't give a damn now something's wrong here I'm not reading this right I defended myself to the best of my ability I was hoping I could go through life without doing such a thing and maybe some of you have actually defended your own life in a similar fashion. It's very sad you have to shoot or kill somebody. Maybe some of you were police officers and have had to do the same. And I don't know if you ever kill a human being, you're never the same as a person who never has killed a human being. It is with you for the rest of your days. Whether you do it in war, whether you do it in murder, whether you do it in self-defense, you have taken one of God's holy creations off this planet. And there is a void there. And I feel that. And I'm very sorry for that. But I had to defend myself. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here. My message must continue. I'm doing it on my own money. And I'll continue to do it as long as it takes, as long as I've got to live. I've got cancer, I'm dying. The radioactive substance that I got hit with in 1979, late August of 79, it's a similar form of aplastic anemia that affects your blood and your bones. My bones are extremely brittle right now. No cure. The government never told me about that, by the way. Now, to sum up everything in this talk, there's going to be a few questions. I'll answer as many as I can for the next speaker. However, I want to sum up and say that every one of you in this room, now this is the way the world should be. There wouldn't be any wars. There wouldn't be any strife. Or if there was, it could be settled in a peaceable manner in a handshake. And that's the original American way, and I believe that way is still there, however remote at present time. Now, I'm going to sum up this talk and mention an overview of the alien agenda. The alien agenda is completely decimate the planet to take the remaining human subjects as slaves, and the aliens would use this planet for their own means. Number one, this cannot be allowed to happen. The world takeover plans of the New World Order, a direct carbon copy blueprint from Adolf Hitler's routine of 1933 to 1938, must not be allowed to happen. That includes the name, the New World Order. That was purposely used, folks, because most of us have been lazy. We have not read our history, and I'm talking to you because I'm one of them. 
We have not read our history books. Things have been omitted. Throw out basically what you've learned. I'm not asking you to believe me. I'm asking you to re-educate each one of yourselves and ask the unexpected of your public officials, of the people around you, your teachers. I'm not asking you to question authority. I'm asking you to question the teachers of this authority. Is this right? Is this law correct? If a law, one of the best statements to ever come out of the mouth of any human being, believe it or not, was, I think, by an incredible black man the name of Jesse, not Jesse Jackson, but it was uh, Martin Luther King, excuse me, said, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. That should be a motto that we live by. Not so much for the man who said the motto, but I'm sure George Washington said something similar. Who said, an uninformed populace is a populace in slavery. Now, our founding fathers had the unique gift 250 odd years ago, 200 to 250 years ago, of looking far in advance, seeing, laying out the groundwork of this wonderful two, two pieces of paper government we've got, the Bill of Rights and the United States Constitution, laying it out for all time. It is the best government probably since time immemorial, maybe the best ever. If we are to, by the way, every freedom that we have must be fought for continuously. You don't need to pick up a gun to fight for something. You need to pick up your mouth. You need to pick up your brain and read a book. You need to pick up your mouth and say, and when you hear somebody say, well, I believe in gun control, and you say, no, I don't believe in gun control, because guess what? You take away that right. What other rights am I going to be missing later on? Now, with gun control. <laughs> gun control. Now, there's a certain few people, generally a 1% to 2% minority of people, that are totally irresponsible, criminal, use the gun improperly, et cetera, et cetera. I'm not talking about those kind of people. There are always going to be those kind of people, at least for the foreseeable future. The average person that owns a gun has prudence, has conscious thought of the knowledge of right and wrong, can and is able to defend itself, herself, himself against foreign and domestic terrorists, so to speak. Now, gun control is an attack on your rights if it is allowed to fully comply and go through. All of your freedoms will be removed within a 10-year period after the last element of gun control. So the attack of any right or the removal of any existing right is an attack and affront on every one of us in this room and should not be tolerated. That's that part of the talk. The overview is about underground mountain bases. All of them should be made public. In future talks, I'll be giving latitudes and longitudes of every single one of these bases. I've already written a manuscript at the publisher as we speak. It's a dynamite book. It lists all the secretive agendas that our government has us believing in right now and why it's so much BS. Why the New World Order is so good for us. Ha ha. Well, don't believe it, folks. Believe in only one thing. Love thy neighbor as thyself and ask continually questions about our constitutional freedoms and defend them if necessary. And most of us will have to probably defend them. I hope this doesn't happen. Now, I'm winding up this talk as best as I can without my notes at hand, but 
I'll be having artifacts up here. You're capable, you're capable of looking at them. I ask you not to handle them. I want all the artifacts back on the table. And don't handle the photograph here, original photograph of the of the flying saucer in 1946. Now I'll take a, a certain few questions. I know there's going to be quite a few of them. Yes, this gentleman here in this row. I've heard of Project TARP. I don't really know that much. It's designed to uh, electrify the ionosphere, and they will be able to map all the underground bases. Uh, there was a crash of a uh, uh, Air Force uh, plane up in Alaska last week, and uh, AWAC plane. Yeah. It was on the last day of a right. uh, Project Harp uh, demonstration. Okay. Yes, I've heard of such projects. Uh, actually, it was invented by Nikola Tesla, the initial part of ionizing the atmosphere. The only trouble is with ionizing the atmosphere, plants plants need nightfall as well as sunlight to survive. So lighting up the atmosphere might do extreme damage. My question I'd like to ask is this. If the aliens have a 1,200 IQ, can speak all these languages and are so powerful, what prevents them from just taking over? Well, that's a good question. <clears throat> Basically, they have taken over. All that's left is a bunch of screaming, all a bunch of us that have been very complacent. Half of the 131 under, deep underground military bases are basic cities for them. Right underneath our feet is a macabre site indeed. You can bet your bottom dollar they've already basically won the war. However, they're being an alien species. We are an alien species to them, and our germs have a tendency to kill them. <clears throat> they're also a dying race and they're in far worse condition than anybody with the worst case of terminal cancer. They are in need of us to some degree. 